kids. It is very discouraging. It is very frightening to know that the banks feel that they are above the law. If the law in the United States is not being enforced, enforced what is going to happen to us? It is money before the people. It is the banks before homes. And it is sad because this is the future of our children. We're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars in fraud, in criminal wrongdoing. And the government is content and happy with settling for billions of dollars. Yeah. We're talking about pennies on the dollar. We're talking about trillions, 45 trillions versus $18 billion, $25 billion in settlement. Are we crazy or what? No. Today we have several homeowners with us that will like to share a little testimony, that would like to share what's going on in their lives. I'm going to ask Sherry to come. Sherry has been struggling and fighting to keep her home. She's a grandmother. She has done everything possible to be able to protect her home. Yet, again, she's going to tell her story. Don't hold back either, Sherry. Woo! Don't hold back. Hi, my name is Sherry Hernandez. Woo! 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 an illness. We had a predatory loan and we wanted to get out of the predatory loan. But they were allowed to hold us to a prepayment penalty that held us into a pre uh, predatory loan and increased our interest and increased our debt over time. And even though we hadn't agreed, it held us and increased our debt. And this is the kind of thing they do. And then they call us deadbeats when they've cheated us. They've cheated us out of our money until we're so underwater that now we can't get another loan to get out of that. And then they tell us they'll give us a modification. They lie to us, use that modification to foreclose on us. And there's people, there's a Joanne Kennedy in Pennsylvania whose husband died, in the, in a, a veteran who died in 1998. And the bank claims they took out a loan in his name in 2005 and they foreclosed on her already paid off home. This is going on all over. They try and, when they put it in the media, they try and make it look like people just lost their homes because they lost their job, they ran on hard luck. But because we allow the crimes to continue, they start going after the innocent. They start going after old people that own their homes. They start going after your families that didn't have a mortgage. This week alone, they made a $6.1 billion settlement with Bank of America again over the countrywide fraudulent mortgages. This, this month, they made $7.3 billion settlement with City Mortgage once again for their fraudulent mortgages. Their, their, um, BlackRock. And PIMCO are talking, uh, have filed a lawsuit for $250 billion against the lenders for their fraudulent mortgage backed securities. Where do you think that money's going to come from? They're not making the fraudulent lenders pay it, they're not making the executives who uh, created this mess pay it. In fact, they're getting bonuses and new job opportunities. They're not making the government pay that or the insurance companies. It goes back to the homeowners. How can homeowners hold up $250 billion that was fraudulently gained and we don't get any relief? It can't be done. It's impossible. And so this will continue. The illusion that it's over is an illusion. It will continue as long as they're suing one another because they have to extract it from us. They have to. They have no choice. Yeah. And now I think Carolyn uh, wants to share her story. Yeah. Here. Here. And Carolyn has been disabled. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. 
Heroin is a fighter. Heroin is an occupier. Heroin is someone that inspires people. When we met Heroin, she had been fighting for her home, not for several months, but for several years. And she is still has not given up. She was thrown out of her house and she went back in. I'm talking about a fighter that will take no for an, an answer. She will never say, I don't want my home. I want my home, she's saying. They have offered her money, and she says, no, I don't want the money. I want my home. And everywhere where we go, when we meet homeowners, I, I am yet to hear a homeowner that will tell me, Carlos, can you guys get us some money? They're not interested in money. They want their homes. People want their homes. Woo. And here in California, we have seen the damage, the devastation the foreclosures have caused. But we have people like Harlan that are willing to stand up and fight. Because we know that it's not about the money. We know that it's about our homes. Yeah. About our future. I want to tell you a little bit, she uh, was disabled due to a, an accident and perhaps she's going to tell you briefly about that, but she also wants to share a little bit about her fight. Um, yes, I'm Harold and I'm Harold and um, I, I, I'm like a fighter, I'm determined to do Speak up, speak up. I'm determined, I'm a fighter, I'm determined and have always been all my life to do the right thing. And what do our parents raise us up to do? Okay? That's what I mean by do the right thing. So I, um, I came into a place where I could own a home. And I came to, to, to know someone in real estate that I had gone to school with. So I found a home. And um, sometimes, unfortunately, people you know take advantage of you. And that's what happened to me. Um, no specifics at this time, but um, it led me to have to try to work more, being disabled, how am I doing that? But I did what I had to do uh, on, on the le legitimate side. So it just really actually wore me out until I said, bank, bank, how'd you give me this loan? <laughs> you know, and they gave me my application. I saw it was a real ugly, untrue thing. So, um, so to come, um, to come current, um, well, actually, um, my note just kept increasing. So how am I going to pay for a loan that increases and I get weaker? So, um, Okay. So I went into researching, 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 and I just um, found um, different ways to fight with the system that was you know, politically correct. But um, even that became um, too difficult for me to bear. And so the bank, I told the bank, I asked the bank, when they sent me my application, um, how did you give me this application? There's no way I make this much money if my honest to goodness true social security number is on this application that you accepted and gave me this great big loan for. How to do that? You know, I wondered. But you know, they, every time I talked to them, they would pretend like I wasn't saying what I was saying. Or you know. so um, um, I okay. Okay, I, the, the most unfortunate thing occurred. I was woken up at 5.30 in the morning by the, by the sheriffs who had their big fat black boot in my door. They had bypassed the, the, the four locks. But thank God for the new latch, bam. That, that was on and he could not um, come into my house. And I was happy. And as a matter of fact, I called Carlos. 
<laughs> I said, Carlos, Carlos, what do I do? He said, Carolyn, you gotta open the door. I, I was like, oh, t wasn't here some plan, <laughs> what I could do. He said, Harold, you gotta open the door. So anyway, I ended up, oh my God, being evicted from a house I had paid, uh, whatever they say, pay. $240,000. How am I paying that? I don't know. But when you have a choice between paying or getting put out in the street, you, you pay. So, um, so anyway, I was um, given rid of position again, amen. And that's my fight right now. That I should, there's no way that I should not be total, complete, sole owner of my house that I went so many years um, affording, however I had to be. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Will Spargo is the one that has refused to work with heroin. Shame. They were ordered by the state of California through a settlement deal that they had to fix all the loans that were predatory, especially the ones like hers from Wachovia. They were ordered, it was a settlement. And guess what Wells Fargo did, like they always do? They ignore the law. They act like it didn't exist, like it didn't mean nothing. And they still went on and did what they always do and took her home. Wells Fargo, is one of the worst banks here in California and continues to hurt families. What do we have to do? We need to start moving our money out of these financial institutions that are ignoring the law. We have another foreclosure fighter with us that has been fighting not only for herself, but for all the people. We'll ask Megan to come and share a little testimony of the struggles that we have to go through and the fights that we have to put up with. Megan. My name is Megan, and uh, I lost my home four and a half years ago. Uh, not to a bank, but to a private uh, lender. I lost it when we only owed two more years left on it. We owed $26,000 left on our $400,000 home. We didn't lose it because we were late. Our mortgage payment was half of what our lease payment is to rent right now. And uh, we lost it because it was 2010. And anyone and everyone was able to foreclose no matter what the situation. 2011, uh, we were evicted from our house, and uh, I lost my marriage. My my, I lost my house. We lost our savings into these uh, attorneys who take advantage of the suffering people. Uh, and uh, we have gotten no justice to date in the courts because we have very fastly realized the courts are not on our side. I get my justice in the streets. I get my justice by helping other people. And that's the only way that the people will get the justice. That's why I'm here. I've watched Harlan Rue go through this. She's a disabled woman. I have seen her getting taken advantage of. And the man who took advantage of her just got busted by the federal uh, government for a fraud for $2.8 million. They have failed to recognize this woman suffered and lost her home because of this man. That is not justice. And we will not get that in courts. We must take it to the streets. We must rise up together and we must keep fighting back because it's not over. The HAMP, the HAMP programs coming through the pipelines right now, there are millions of homeowners that are looking at foreclosure because the government put a temporary band-aid on their, their faulty loans. Um, that, that is the next pipelines. We're running out of properties
to put people in. We ran out of properties a long time ago, yet there are empty homes everywhere. And there are homeless families everywhere. I meet children who are taking baths out of the hoses in their front yards while their doors are locked by the sheriff. And, and uh, the stories go on and on and on. And to hear these stories and not stand up and do something about it, it it's impossible. So that's why I'm here. That's why I organize with the group that I organize with. And that's why I help the people I help along with people like Carolyn. And uh, thank you. Thank you. I want to tell you a little story about what Governor Brown did to California. Kamala Harris entered into agreement with other attorney generals that they would settle with the banks for all the wrongdoing that they did. That was called the National Mortgage Fraud Settlement. $25 billion. That's what they got. $25 billion. Kamala Harris got the most out of all the settlements. She got $18 billion with a B, $18 billion. After the settlement, homeowners were getting a check for having lost their homes for no more than $640. Some people got as much as $20. I kid you not, $20. And then comes Governor Brown because he had a crisis in California that he inherited from Arnold Schwarzenegger and he decided to take part of that settling money, the $18 billion, he decided to take 510, excuse me, $410 million that belonged to homeowners to help them keep their homes. He took it without permission. The government took the money. He just grabbed it, and he balanced the budget. Now the governor is going around the nation claiming that through his good works, he balanced California budget. But we know the truth. He balanced the budget because he took money that didn't belong to him. He took money from struggling homeowners. That meant that many Californians lost their homes because Governor Brown took money that belonged to them. Shame, shame, shame. 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 Now, Governor Brown is telling us now that the budget has been balanced, that there is a surplus. So we're here to tell Governor Brown that it's time that he pays the money back. It's time to pay the money back. The federal government 
get California two billion with a B, two billion dollars to help the struggling homeowners keep their homes. If you lost your job, if your hours were cut from your job, or if you perhaps got sick, your spouse got sick, your child got sick, and you had to make a decision between paying medical bills or paying the mortgage, well, the program was supposed to help you. It was supposed to give you $30,000 that you didn't have to pay back so that you could save your home. That money was given to California, listen to this, in 2010. Four years ago, last year, when we began to expose what was going on with the program, Keep Your Home California, we found out that in three and a half years, they had only used 400 million. 400 million out of the two billion dollars. A lot of homeowners lost their jobs. A lot of homeowners got sick. And they were having to make decisions, having to use their bank accounts, their savings, their retirement money to keep their homes. Shame. Yet, California, keep your home California, was being greedy for the money that belonged to the people. And they were saving the money, hiding the money. Well, people were losing their, job, their, their homes. So we're here today to tell the people that are running Keep Your Home California that it's time for you to start using the money and not keeping the money, the money from California. Yeah. The money is needed now. There is $1.3 billion, $1.3 billion that can be used to save people's homes today. What are they waiting for? How long do we have to wait to get this money to keep people in their homes? Seniors need the money. Working Californians need the money. Working Americans need the money. And they need it now. Yay. It's time to keep the money to the people. It's time to use the money. It's time for Keep Your Home California to get the act together and start using the money for what it was meant to be used for. Woo! Now I'm going to tell you another story. And this is a good one. Because we have Carmela Harris, the Attorney General of California, being lifted as a hero for California because she got $18 billion. And like I told you before, most homeowners didn't get to see a dime. Some got to see only a couple hundred dollars. Well, there was record numbers of homeowners losing their homes. She allowed the governor to take some of the money. Her office has taken millions of dollars, supposedly, to fight fraud, mortgage fraud. But what Camilla Harris did, she went and created a mortgage task force, a mortgage fraud task force. She called it at a strike force. 25 attorneys, $2.8 million to operate annually. Since forming the task force, Camilla Harris has managed, listen to this, to prosecute or file lawsuits for only 10, 10 law scammers. Only 10 fosters. Only 10 people. That is a shame. She needs to be held accountable. 
She's got 25 attorneys. She's got millions of dollars. And she has to arrest nobody. Damn shit. Shame on her. We have local prosecutors doing more with very small budgets than she is doing with millions of dollars and 25 attorneys. Shame. The money that she received has failed to trickle down to our communities and local law enforcement, enforcement to fight mortgage fraud. It is a shame. Hey. Now she wants to run once again to be re-elected as the Attorney General of California. Never again. Homeowners understand that Camilla Harris has done little to nothing to help them keep their homes. Shame on Camilla Harris. We're going to have another testimony. I'm trying to see. Uh, let me see. We need a, a testimony in Spanish. Any volunteers? Yo soy básicamente ha estado en Occupy Los Ángeles, pero ha representado Occupy Tijuana. Encinitas y San Diego y Las Vegas. Este, hubo una familia que básicamente la esposa estaba legal y el hombre estaba ilegal. Y le pusieron a una persona de bancaria, un, un chavalo que no sabía ni las reglas de nada. Y le dijo al señor y a la señora, ustedes no pueden tener casa. Es más, ustedes están cometiendo fraude porque tu esposo está ilegal. Pero en este país... No hay nadie, no hay nadie que haya una ley en este país que si tú estás ilegal no puedes comprar casa, sí la puedes comprar. Entonces en eso la esposa está legal, ella, ellos lo compraron y todo esto. Pero a fines de, co de todo, el muchacho lo, le pusieron tanta presión que le llamaron a inmigración, lo sacaron de la casa y la única razón que me di yo cuenta es porque yo me estaba quedando ese fin de semana en la casa de ellos y a mí también me dijeron, oh, tú también estás ilegal, vas para afuera. Y luego se dieron cuenta que no estaba ilegal, pero la cosa es de que esa fue la injusticia. Estaban más, ellos estaban más entretenidos de que él estaba ilegal, de vez de darle justicia al muchacho por el fraude que le hizo. Y se lo voy a decir muy claro, la compañía Countrywide, y estoy seguro que ustedes saben quién es Countrywide, you ¿no? Know? Es un crimen de verdad y todo eso. Entonces yo quería representar a este muchacho Luis, que no voy a decir su apellido porque está ilegal en el país, pero él vive en el condado de San Diego y yo me llamo Manny Aguilar. Muchas gracias. And we're going to go visit a couple of these banks. We're going to go visit Wells Fargo. And we're going to go visit Bank of America. We're going to remind them that we're here. We're going to remind them that Bank of America is bad for America. We're going to remind Wells Fargo that it's not about money. About people. We're going to remind them that as long as they continue to take people's home, we will continue to expose and we will continue to demand justice for the people. I'm going to invite you to march with us. We're going to go down the street with us.
on the earth and the universe. Babylon to the fallen gone. We are the immigrants. We are the immigrants. From Moses to Muhammad and all in between. Put your hands together. Everything to that team. 
continues to happen again and again. They think that by throwing some money to settle for the wrongdoing, that the American people will forget. Judge Trump, we're here to tell you, we know what you're doing. You're a criminal. You're stealing for the American people. You hurt, you hurt his families. You hurt our seniors. You hurt our mothers, our fathers, our grandfathers, our children. This is what you're doing. You hurt our communities. You are the king of territory lending. There has been countless of losses filed against Wells Fargo for the criminal behavior. Unfortunately, we have prosecutors that look at the money that Wells Fargo shows them and they settle with them. But we're here to let Wells Fargo know that we do not agree to such settlements. We do not agree to the way that they are conducting their business. It is nothing but fraud. Fought against the courts, fought against the law, fought against the nation. He has to stop. He has to stop. You see, we have some employees that think it is funny. They laugh at it. But little they know that the very people that they're hurting could be their own families. Everybody has been affected by foreclosures. Everybody. He has been the crime of the century. Trillions of dollars have been stolen from the people. Trillions. It is estimated that the fraud that the banks have committed against the nation passes $45 trillion. $45 trillion. And we also know that there are 10 million 10 million Americans today that are underwater because what the banks have done to the people. It is time for us to close our accounts. There are good banks that are doing good business with the American people. Credit unions too. Credit unions, community banks are willing to do the right thing. We are here to tell you that we are against banks. We are here against the crimes that they are committed against the nation. We want banks to make money, but do it right. Do it right. Do it right. Well, Fargo, you need to do it right. You need to do it right. You need to do it right. I'm going to tell you a personal story. I usually don't share my story. I had over $300,000 of equity. I was not behind payments. And the bank that took my home was not even a bank that had my mortgage. You may say, well, that only happens to maybe a few people. To be surprised. To be surprised at the massive fraud that these banks are committing. I took the people to court. I won my case. And you know what the bank did? They turned around and went to another court, filed another unlawful detainer, and literally stole my house, even though that I had a judgment from a court, from a Supreme a Superior Court of California, giving me the house that they had stolen, and the 
multiple views has been that people buy too much home. So why do they give them a loan then? Simple. If they were buying too many, too, uh, if they were buying homes that they could not afford, why do you give them a loan then? Yeah, yeah. Just give them a loan. You blame it on the people. The fact that these crimes have been premeditated. Who are the only ones that benefit by foreclosures? The banks. Not the homeowners. Not the communities. Not our schools. It's the banks. It's the banks. It's the banks. And over and over we see the same thing. Banks continuing to abuse the system. Banks continue to abuse the homeowners. Homeowners come to Wells Fargo. I need your help. My hours were cut off. I just need a little help. The bank says, we're glad to help you. Fill out this application. You fill it out, you turn it in. And you're thinking that you're on your way to get a temporary loan modification. A month later, you call the bank. And you want to know the status. And they say, well, when are you going to send your documents? Well, I send it to you, Mr. Wells Fargo. You never received it. Yet you have proof, but they don't want to see the proof. These are the kind of games they play. That's the kind of games Wells Fargo plays. Over and over and over. If they want people in their homes, they will keep people in their homes. The fact is that they don't want to work with the people. It's a no-brainer. They make more money throwing people to the streets than keeping people in their homes. Yeah. Why is it that homeowners come to the bank, ask them to adjust their loans to the current value of the property? And the bank say no. But then they turn around and sell it to investors for less than the current value of the homes. They're greedy. <laughs> it is nothing but greed. That's the reality that the American people is facing. And Wells Fargo has no intention of changing because the money is good. Ask John Stump how much money he made last year. He didn't make less money. Banks keep making more and more money. It's profit for them. It's big time. They make money in foreclosures. They make money selling it to investors. They play games with the people that service the loans. That's why some of you, do, you don't even know who you're paying your loan to. Because they have switched from one bank to the other, to the other, to the other. They use different companies. I know that Wells Fargo uses American services for their servicing rights. 